Hiya, I'm Reverend Dr. Juliana Taylor, and I'm going to share some things with you. I'm going to share tonight a word about purpose, your divine purpose, and the power that your purpose has. I'm going to share a word about the power of purpose, or we could say the victimization of being out of your purpose, because they're two of the same. One and the same, two of the same. Amen. So, you know, the word says this, press on to the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, oh good. Press on to the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I can do that. You can do that. I mean, we know that's true. Don't look back. Amen. The word says don't look back forgetting those things that are behind me. I know one thing. Paul said this. I mean, all everything that he had been through. I know one thing. Forgetting those things that are behind me. My father used to say that. Forget about it to my mother all day long. Forget about it. Forget those things that are behind you. And press on to the mark for the prize. The high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Well, what is that, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus? That's your purpose. That's your purpose. So, one thing, one thing he's apprehended, and I could say, you know, through my trials and tribulations and testimonies, I have found this, that purpose has power. Even when you're being healed, when certain things you have to do, that's your purpose to accomplish, you have power. There's so much power in purpose, stepping out by faith, violent faith, and doing what God wants you to do, called you to do, in that moment it changes because you take that territory. So let's talk about what happens. Amen. Why? Why? Doesn't that get that? Why it should be so easy? Forget. Press on. Who has a problem with that? Hallelujah. I'd love to forget and press on. Okay. Well, I don't know about you. But I've had some very interesting and almost always when I'm ready to press on to a major territory, I'm not talking about a little land, I'm talking about pressing on maybe to something that I've been procrastinating for a long time. That the mind, the enmity against God, the carnal mind, the fear mind has kept me out of because it knows there's power there for me. It knows when I get there, there's going to be less of it. I'm going to have power over it. I'm going to be exercising my divine rights and spiritual authority over it. It's going to lose power. It's going to lose a little territory up here and in here and in the body. And I am going to gain. I am going to increase in Christ, in my personal Christos, my spirit being. And the flesh is going to die a little bit. So this war between the flesh and the spirit it's a very interesting phenomena and something that you and I are going to be in for the rest of our lives. So we need to know how it operates. Amen. We need to know how to overcome the flesh, how to take the territory away from the flesh and how to bring the flesh under subjection. Well, that's a war. The Bible calls that the war between the flesh and the spirit, bringing the flesh under subjection. So hello, it's a war. A war doesn't mean this. Oh, I say, I'm going to press on to the mark for the prize. Hallelujah. I'm going to get up tomorrow morning. Kick a little butt. Amen. Well, I have found most of the time, whether I'm going to take a little piece of physical land, a healing, or I'm going to take a little piece of territory that I haven't been in, that I thought, you know, I've been wanting to take maybe for a while. The longer you have procrastinated, the bringing that part under subjection Probably the more your mind has there and the greater the attack is going to be. Amen? Okay, so now who's going to attack me, Reverend Juliana? I'm going to get up tomorrow morning. I'm inspired. And I'm going to start taking my territory and bringing that flesh into subjection. I'm going to die daily and have more of God. I, I get it. No, I, I see what you're saying. That's really what it is. Purpose has power. And I maybe am being disempowered because I'm not stepping out in faith and taking the territory that God has given me. I'm being a little pushed back. Well, you know why. Because every time you've tried to take a little step in that direction, the flesh goes... And you 
forget what you're doing. Oh, yeah, I'll do it next week. And I'll say, maybe not today. Oh, what about this one? Maybe that's not God's will. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And we go on and on and on. That little piece of territory is there looking at you. Had you taken that little piece of territory two years ago, beloved? Five years ago, last week, you know, ten years ago, who knows? We know these things can go on and on and on and not be taken. I like to call that the holding back syndrome. There is a holding back syndrome when you go out to take a piece of territory. And if you can identify it, and if you know that's what it is, you are okay. You are good to go. Because you know, two days, three days, four days, five days, I've never been anything more than a week, but it could happen, and that's okay. If I've identified it, and I know exactly, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm in the holding back syndrome. Wow, am I under an attack? I can't think. I'm green. I've got bags under my eyes. I might wake up a little heavy. I have fear and anxiety. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to go anywhere. It's like, what happened to me? I was had joy three days ago. I stepped into this territory. It wants you to think, it's not of God. And then it starts to play with your mind. Oh, well, maybe this little piece of it is of God, but over there, don't do it like that, because that's not of God. Now, listen to how it talks, and we're going to identify what is attacking you, and you are going to gain so much power to go out tomorrow and kick a little butt in your personal territory, because your personal territory is your empowerment. Your empowerment isn't going along with Joe's personal territory, some group's personal territory. You know, it's, it's, I stand with people. That's what I do. I'm a professional stander, but I'm, I'm taking te their territory with them. But that's what I do. I'm not on their territorial trip. I have my territory. Part of my territory is to help others take territory. It's my ministry. That's my mission. But if I were just hanging around while they're taking their territory you know, because I like to hang around people that take territory. It's like you go somewhere and you go to some club and somebody runs the club and you do everything their way, whatever the thing is. You know, even politically speaking, you have to be careful that you always maintain wherever you go your personal purpose. Somebody may be in their purpose, but that don't make that your purpose. And anytime you get in somebody else's purpose, you are losing your spiritual, your holy identity. So your purpose and your holy identity apart will bring to you your spiritual authority and divine rights. That makes you who you are, the righteousness of God in Christ, the new creature in Christ. What does the new creature in Christ do? One thing I've apprehended, I don't look back, but I press on to the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Because you know what? When I'm there pressing on, it's when I get to the other side of that mountain, beloved, when I conquer those little giants in the land, I'm good. I'm higher. I feel great. And then I take the next piece of territory. The minute we stop having a territorial mentality, we're being pushed back. We're either codependent in somebody else's thing, or their blah, blah, but we're not in God's thing. And the only thing that's going to give you personal power. When I say personal power, I don't mean you're empowering your flesh. I mean you're bringing your flesh under subjection. You are smack dab in the will of God, in the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, power, spiritual authority, temperance. You love everybody. You have unspeakable joy. It is all good. Until it's time to take the next piece of territory. You know, Jesus is always the fourth man in the fire. If you stay in the fire, you come out a little bit, you, you, you get that reward, you're in those fruits. It's like a little vacation for you, a little vacation from the fire. You know, you're enjoying it, and then you start to feel a little, mm, little mm, oppression, and you want to think it's this, it's that relationship, it's your diet, it's your mother, it's, 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 it's I'm going to tell you what it is. It's your purpose, and you need to get yourself right back there in the fire. Put a flame underneath that flesh and rise up. Rise up and be who you are, the new creature in Christ, the righteousness of God in Christ, and the way to keep being a partaker of the divine nature, that which God has given you. It's inherited. It belongs to you. The way to keep it going, amen, is to take your territory. Your territory is your personal purpose. Okay. I don't know what your territory is, 
but you do. I know you do. I had Gloria Copeland said something once that I thought was just brilliant. Just one of those prophetic words that you never forget. And she said this, and I've never forgotten it. This was years ago. She said this, well, if you're wondering today what the will of God is in your life, <laughs> do what he told you to do last time. <laughs> if you're wondering what your purpose is now, you know the one you haven't done for five years. That's the end of holding back syndrome. That'll just take everything out of you. Oh, that'll take your life force. That'll suck you dry, I hate his expression. But you'd be dry bones, dry bones. But you don't need to be because you have a purpose. And you always have a purpose. When you're finished with a purpose, you've got the next purpose. But I'm saying you could like cruise a little bit, you know. Don't get compulsive, but keep that purpose in mind. Amen. Write it down. Two weeks, three weeks, where I'll be there. You talk to that flesh, flesh. No, don't think this is some kind of free ride for you to go crazy on me, to start pushing me back, because I'm taking the next piece of territory. Amen. Keep a territory calendar. What could be more important? You know, your little tea gatherings, you get together, your lunches with people, your job. Territorial calendar. This is as far as you go, flesh, without me pushing you back. Because I know when I don't push you back, you're pushing me down. Somebody's getting oppressed, or the whole world would be an unspeakable joy, divine love. Personal territory. A lot of people are out taking everybody else's territory. Oh, it's all good. It's not good. God lit you when you came into the world to take your personal territory. And that is the only thing on this earth, beloved, that's going to raise you up. It's going to raise you up. Your spirit knows what it is. And the minute it hears it, it gets like, goes wild. So excited. Because your heart and spirit, they're afraid of something. They're afraid you're not going to do it. Imagine to a spirit not doing its purpose. It's like a life unlived. It's spiritual death. It's oppression. Amen. So tomorrow, you're going to be wiser than you were today in the battle. Tomorrow, you're going to get up and you're going to say, okay, I'm done. I know exactly, Reverend Juliana, <laughs> what that piece of territory is. I'm going for it. I don't care if I'm in a pandemic. I don't care if it snows in Miami. <laughs> I don't care what they're doing in China because I know one thing. My way out of this mess is my own personal territory. Hallelujah. Believe me, it's true. Keep your eyes on the prize. Amen. Okay, the mark for the prize is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This is your high calling, your territory. This is resurrection. Hallelujah. Get up tomorrow. You make that decision. You know, the decision gives you power. You go for it. This may, may not happen. Maybe you just fly. Maybe you just go right through it. Hallelujah. But very often when I go for it, I get in there, do a little boom. Oh, my God. Something hits me. My neck, my stomach. You know, I had joy. And now, I'm, I mean, two days ago, I was the happiest woman in the world. Now I'm, could it be? And you know, you lose it. You really do. You're not thinking clearly now. You're in the attack. You have a little idea. Could this be from the territory? <laughs> Maybe. It's because I stepped out in faith. Is it possible? Amen. So now what you need to know is, yes, it's possible. It's the holding back syndrome. And who's involved in the holding back syndrome? Doubt. So the way it's going to think, well, you know, maybe this isn't God, or that little piece of it is God, or God really wants you over here, or, you know, tomorrow, <laughs> not today. Rest, recover from this, whatever you're in, who knows, maybe a stomach ache, you hurt your back. You hear what it's, it's doubt? It sounds like doubt, right? The second thing, beloved, that may attack you, oppress you, is condemnation. Why? Because you're opposing this thing, you're opposing your generational dispensation you're opposing sin consciousness you're saying that which was done to me at the cross of calvary hallelujah that which jesus did he took the law of sin and death sin consciousness amen condemnation this is what we're talking about he took it the illness the 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 doubt the condemnation the weaknesses all of that all of that could go wrong. Amen. 
and he brought me out of that, out of that sin consciousness, out of the law of sin and death. And he translated me by one blood offering at the cross to be who I am. Hallelujah. The righteousness of God in Christ, the new creature in Christ with spiritual authority over my flesh, over my mind, over my thoughts, over condemnation, over doubt, over this whole thing. And I'm going to take it. So when I set my mind to appropriate it, you know, God took everything at the cross. The Lord took it to the devil, made a show of every principality, all the illnesses, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't mean you can't get them. You can get them if you don't know who you are. So taking territory rises up the spirit to remember. Oh, yeah. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, the new creature in Christ, excuse me. And it goes right into its deal. A little battle may ensue. So I'm giving you a little warfare, prophetic word here. Then the word is doubt and condemnation may attack you. And it doesn't feel good. It feels like sadness and confusion. And you feel like, you, you know, loss of clarity. <laughs> and that's the time, beloved, to up the ante. Whatever it is you're doing, do more. You see, don't let it push you back. You say, oh, you know, now I've identified it. Good, I'm in the right territory. Tomorrow, doubt. Tomorrow, condemnation. Tomorrow, flesh. Tomorrow, old creature. I'm getting up early. And I'm hitting this thing not once. Three, four times tomorrow. I'm taking this territory. And I am doing it every day. I don't care what I feel like what I look like, what I think like. I am doing this, the back hurts more, I'm going for healing, the back, back hurts more. I don't care about any of this. And I'm doing it every day, every day, until I'm free. And the territory belongs to me. And fear and doubt and condemnation have come under subjection. And that's what will happen. And I will have more. I will increase. Ha, 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 in Christ, in the spirit, and you flesh will decrease. I will be radically alive, <laughs> and you will be backed up under me, under my feet, where you should be. Amen. Because Jesus died on the cross for me to take this. This is my vessel job description to bring you under subjection. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you. And I'm just delighted. Please tell me the land that you're taking. You you have my email here. Just just give me a shout. Give me a testimony. Let me know. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And I'm so glad I knew what to do. I'm doing it every day, every day, every day, every day. It only took me two days. I don't know what's wrong with you, Reverend Julian. I had this thing locked up in a day and a half. <laughs> Amen. If it doesn't bow to you right away, beloved, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Don't run and get prayer. Don't call everybody you know. Don't discuss it with anybody. Step back. Identify. Flesh is rising up, pressing on to the mark of the prize. You don't like it, do you, flesh? Start talking to you. You don't like it, do you, flesh? Oh, you don't like it at all. Yeah, I'm rising up. You're going to get down. Amen. How do you just do more? Just do more. Just keep up in the ante. God calls this violent faith. Violent faith. It's the faith of the spirit, the faith of the redeemed spirit in its holy identity who knows who it is. Oh, yes, with violent faith, my love, you can do anything. My whole testimony, how I was healed of lupus, environmental illness, allergic to everything on earth, was through violent faith, the faith of the spirit of the new creature in Christ, rising up, not talking, yes, rising up, get out of my way, flesh. I'm here to take the land. I'm excited about it. You'll get there. You'll get to look forward to the next line. Write down, make a list of all your territories. Watch Jesus be the fourth man in the fire. I love you. This is what God wanted to share. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.